About 2 million years ago, early humans hadn't figured out farming yet, so they mainly relied on collecting fruits, tree bark, tree roots, and even insects to survive, as did several other hominid species, including one called Australopithecus. But around this time, a change began to happen, not among the humans, but the climate. An ice age was beginning, and for many humans, long portions of the year were marked by cold temperatures and food shortages. To overcome this obstacle, the solution Australopithecus came up with was to eat a higher quantity of lower quality plants, like weeds and grasses. While Homo sapiens, that's us, found that in times of scarcity, animal meat and bone marrow could supplement fruits, and actually provided greater amounts of protein and access to different important nutrients that only a few plants could provide. If you look around today, only one of us is still around, as Australopithecus died out around 2 million years ago, and it's thought that their different feeding habits influenced their eventual demise. In this way, eating meat helped save humans from extinction. Ever since then, humans have been hunting and eating animals to satisfy parts of their diet, and eventually figured out that if we captured some of their young and raised them alongside us, we didn't have to put ourselves in danger and could have a reliable source of food. This process of training and breeding animals to coexist with humans is called domestication, and any animal we raise for the purpose of eating or deriving some other value out of, like for their eggs, milk, or leather, is called livestock. And although today many of these are found all over the world, each one had to have come from somewhere specific, and each one has an interesting story behind their domestication. So let's get the big one out of the way first, chickens. The term chicken actually used to mean just the young ones, while the term fowl was used for the whole species. That's why we still call all young birds chicks, even if they aren't chickens. Honestly, I could do a whole video about chickens, so I hope you're ready for this. Modern day chickens are the domesticated form of what's called the red jungle fowl, a bird that struts along the floor of tropical forests, scratching seeds and other foods out of the soil. In the wild, the red jungle fowl originated over an area stretching from India into China and down into Southeast Asia, making it all the way to Sumatra. And to this day, there are still wild populations of jungle fowl throughout this area. Although out of the red jungle fowl's initial range, the earliest definitive evidence of chicken domestication comes out of Hebei province in China and would have occurred around 7,400 years ago. From China, the domesticated chicken quickly spread east, with evidence of domesticated chickens in India from around 7,000 years ago. By around 5,000 years ago, they made it to Anatolia and into Eastern Europe not long after. Evidence of chickens in the Middle East only go back to 4,000 years, and they only reached Egypt around 3,400 years ago, or by about 1400 BCE. The shocking part about all this, however, is that the chicken had not been domesticated for farming or even consumption yet. Instead, this entire time, or for the first 5,000 years after chickens were first domesticated, they were being used for the sole purpose of cockfighting, both as entertainment as well as gambling. The first evidence we have of people actually farming and eating chickens comes from only 2,300 years ago in the ancient Israeli city of Maresha. It was here that a tremendous collection of over a thousand chicken bones were found. These bones were mostly from female chickens, so they couldn't have been used for cockfighting. There were many fully mature bones, so they weren't being selectively killed at birth. And most importantly, the bones bear markings from knives, indicating that they were being cooked and cut up. With 19 billion total chickens alive today on Earth, grown solely for their meat, I think it's safe to say we use them more for eating than gambling now. And our domestication of the chicken has made it the most populous bird on the planet, with two and a half chickens for every human on Earth. Okay, I think I'm about done with chickens. Cows, which also go by the name cattle, are actually older than domesticated chickens, and they can trace their wild heritage back to a beast known as an auric, which has since gone extinct. But we still know what they look like because they are one of the most common images to have been recorded as cave paintings. Yeah, they look a lot like cows, that's kind of the point. These were an incredibly versatile animal that really only needed grass to survive. Because of this, they basically originated anywhere with grass, and their range spreads all the way from Western Europe through Asia all the way to China. DNA analysis, however, indicates that the domesticated cow we're familiar with today likely originated from just around 80 oryx near the village of Chanyo Tepezi in modern-day Turkey, maybe even by a single group of people, which is really crazy if you think about it. Cows that came out of this domestication event are called taurine cows, and sometimes mistakenly called European cows. 
A second domestication event happened, however, which resulted in Indocene cows, which, if you couldn't tell by the name, happened near the banks of the Indus River in modern-day Pakistan. These look notably different from most cows we're used to, featuring, among other things, a large hump on their back. Instead of cows, these can also be called zebu, and not everyone agrees that they should be considered the same as cows, but at least genetically speaking, they're essentially the same animal. Cows are also thought to be one of the oldest forms of currency, and if we still used them, India would be the richest country on Earth, hosting over 300 million of them, or roughly 30% of the world cow population, and Brazil would be second with 232 million, or 23% of all the cows. And yet, YouTube refuses to pay me in cows, and Patreon doesn't even let me make a choice to receive donations in cows. Pig also used to be the word for a young pig, while the word swine was used for the whole species. Which means someday piglet could come to mean an adult pig, and then we would need to find a new word, probably something like piggle for their babies. The swine as a whole, however, are the domesticated version of the Eurasian boar, which, as the name implies, also kinda had a ginormous range throughout Europe and Asia. But it's thought more anciently they originated out of Southeast Asia around 2 million years ago. However, they were domesticated in more or less the same exact place as cows within the Tigris River Basin, likely South Central Turkey as well. Since turkey seems to be very popular so far, let's talk about turkeys next. I was surprised to find that turkeys actually did get their name from the country Turkey, but maybe not in the way you'd expect. You see, wild turkeys had an original range across North America, nowhere near the country of Turkey, most likely originating in the warm pine forest of Mexico. But upon finding America, Europeans realized just how much they liked them and brought them back to the old world. Quickly, turkeys made their way to the Ottoman Empire, which excelled in the trade of a very similar bird, the guinea fowl. The Turkish people came to breed and further domesticate the bird and began distributing it throughout the Mediterranean and all the way back to Britain. From there, the bird became associated with those who traded the bird, and they became Turkish birds, birds from Turkey, and eventually just turkeys. I guess the Turkish just really love domesticating animals. Moving on to sheep, like all of these, sheep had a more wild ancestor called a mouflon, from which modern domesticated sheep were bred from. These guys looked a thousand times cooler than modern sheep, and I definitely want to ride one. The original range of mouflons was from the Caucasus into, yeah, Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, and down into Iraq and Iran. They were one of the first domesticated animals when, 11,000 years ago, the Mesopotamians domesticated them. Though it's unclear where exactly in Mesopotamia this happened, who are we kidding, it was probably Turkey. Goats are very similar to sheep, so it only makes sense that they come from roughly the same place and were domesticated at roughly the same time. Except domestic goats likely came from the wild Bezor ibex, which has some serious horns, and actually have the largest horns relative to body size of any animal on Earth. These have a range from the Zagros Mountains into, yeah, Turkey and the Caucasus as well. The term to refer to a baby or a young goat is just kid, so this is just a bunch of kids. This phrase comes from England and is actually older than referring to human children as kids, which originated in America during the 1800s. So yeah, basically calling a child a kid means you're calling them a baby goat. Horses are probably the most awesome of the animals that we eat, and also help in finally getting us out of Mesopotamia. They likely roamed the Pontic steppe from Ukraine through Russia and all the way into Kazakhstan, and it was here that they were also likely domesticated, around 6,000 years ago. The earliest irrefutable evidence of horse domestication comes from sites shared between Russia and Kazakhstan, where the horse carcasses were found buried with chariots, clearly indicating they were being used and had been for some time. A very close relative of the horse is the donkey, which yeah, are also called ass, and a female donkey, now called a jinny, was just called a she-ass. I'm telling you all this not because it's important, but because I have to have fun making these videos too. Despite being close relatives to the horse, they originated from the African wild ass, which had a range from Egypt all the way down to the Horn of Africa as far as Somalia. However, this region used to be a lot more grassy, and now their true range is centered around Ethiopia. But this original range explains why the donkey was originally domesticated in a place called Nubia by pastoral people in modern-day Sudan. Camels are kind of difficult because there's really two different camels, the dromedary, what most of us consider as a regular camel, and then the Bactrian camel. Dromedaries, also known as Arabian camels, are just that, originating in Arabia and spilling over a bit into North and East Africa, and it was either here in Arabia or in Somalia that they were first domesticated, whereas Bactrian camels come from, well, Bactria, which is roughly this area, mostly in modern-day Afghanistan and Pakistan. Because of their original habitat, it was these types of camels, the Bactrian ones, that were used for the Silk Road. 
closely related to camels are llamas and alpacas. Because of their similarities to each other, they're often confused, but they are in fact different animals. The important difference between them is size, as llamas can be up to 6 feet tall, whereas alpacas are smaller, typically only over 4 feet tall. The range of the llama is also bigger, stretching from Ecuador down to Chile and even Argentina, while alpacas can mostly be found within southern Peru and northern Chile. But basically, both can be found within the Andes and are sort of just used as the cows of the Andes Mountains. If that's the case, then the cows of the Himalaya Mountains would be yaks, which are basically cows that grow their own skirts, as they've become adapted for cold and mountainous regions. The most important difference between cows and yaks, however, in my opinion at least, is that while cows moo, yaks grunt, and even their Latin name, Bos Grunius, reflects this, translating into bull grunting. The last two livestock creatures I want to talk about aren't often thought about. Typically, we don't directly eat these, but instead we just use the products they create. The first one is the silkworm. These are the larval stage of the silk moth, which produce, yeah, you guessed it, silk. The wild silk moth has a range starting in northern India and coming all the way up into northern China and even into far eastern Russia. Domestication occurred in China roughly 5,000 years ago, and then the secret of their domestication was closely guarded when outsiders came, and Europeans had to steal silkworms in order to figure it out. It's a very interesting story, but we don't have time for it right now. Lastly, we have the honeybee. Now, some might argue this doesn't count as a domesticated livestock, but they're still an animal that we derive a tremendous amount of value from, both through their honey and wax, but especially through their pollination practices. So I figured I'd include them regardless. Of the 20,000 different bee species that exist on Earth, only seven produce honey, and it's thought that the first honeybees came from Africa and spread naturally across the rest of Eurasia. And today, the most popular one is called the Western honeybee, or sometimes the European honeybee. Hint, hint. And because Europeans had a lot of fun sailing all around the world and meeting a bunch of new people and definitely didn't do anything bad in any of these places, the modern range of the Western honeybee looks like this. Although they likely originated closer to this area, cave paintings in both Spain and France have been found depicting humans collecting honey from beehives. The first evidence of actual domestication comes from Egypt, where tombs have been found with images of beekeeping from around 9,000 years ago. Which is crazy because beekeeping suits wouldn't be around for another 7,500 years. They were only invented in the 1500s, so yeah, for over 7,000 years, people took care of bees with nothing or close to nothing. Which, I like honey and all, but overall doesn't seem worth it. That's about it for livestock. Let me know if you'd like to see another video, maybe about our grains, vegetables, or possibly even pets. As always, thank you to my patrons for helping make this video and this channel possible. If you want to get your name up here like these generous people, I got a link coming up for you. Of course, you should subscribe if you like this, and if you haven't yet, maybe you should check out my videos on where spices and fruits came from. I'll be back soon with another one. Thanks.